Hello family, my name is Chris, I am your home gamer dad, and I welcome you to the next Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid Team Breakdown, where today we're going to be looking at a very unique set of Rangers here. These six are 100% American made, there is no Super Sentai counterpart to these Rangers here, and even though they never appear directly on any of the shows, their origins are traced back to Hyper RPG, an online Twitch and YouTube streaming service, as well as their appearances within the Boom comic books, which I believe they're actually getting a revival in that as well very soon. Today we'll be going ahead and breaking down Power Rangers Hyperforce. It's actually fairly easy to bring all of the six rangers together. You're just going to need two expansions in order to do that. For the five main rangers, that would be Marv, Jack, Chloe, Vesper, and Eddie, look no further than the Shattered Grid Big Box expansion, which will also get you new foot soldiers, new bosses, and new monsters, all based off of the Shattered Grid storyline, which is where these rangers first, well, they didn't first appear in it, but that whole storyline became what it is today because of Hyperforce. The sixth member of the team, Joe, can be found in Ranger Ally Pack 2, which I have mentioned here before, and will continue to tell you that this is a fantastic set to buy. The five Rangers that come in Ally Pack 2 are all absolutely amazing characters, some of my favorites across all of Power Rangers, and to have him in addition to that in order to make the team of six really brings it all together. As always, when I talk about cards and how they combo off of other cards and player abilities and things along that ways, it's only going to be within the Hyperforce team. That's all I'm going to be talking about within this video if I talk about anything like that. Of course, because these guys have been around for so long, there are hundreds of different combinations out there that I'm sure all of you out there have experimented with or tried or heard of or anything along that ways. So down in the comments section below, please let us know your best combos that you've pulled off using Hyperforce Rangers with any other Rangers that have currently been released within the Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid universe. Again, there are so many out there that I can only imagine that you are going to be able to find all types of cool abilities and powers and strengths within the Hyperforce and the other Rangers. Gonna travel through time, fighting evil we find, stronger together, building our forces behind. The time for action is here, crushing down all the fear, break them down, make darkness disappear. Go, go Power Rangers, you will set things right. Go, go Power Rangers, you will fight with all your might. Power Rangers, Hyperforce, ready? Power up. Whatever this thing is, I don't think we can take any risks. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. It's more Chloe Ashford. Hyperforce Pink. Chloe has a bubbly and fun-loving personality. She loves joking around and cooking burritos. However, inside she has many fears and insecurities, mostly because of her father and his role in the Hyperforce story. She is very clever, loves food, and does what's right even if it means breaking the rules. Chloe's special ability, Impulsive. You may spend one energy to take the first turn in battle even if there's an enemy card with a fast keyword in play. Very oddly worded there because you would always take the first turn in battle regardless, or at least I haven't seen anything otherwise that would change that if there wasn't a fast keyword in play. But regardless of anything, Chloe uses her speed, nimbleness, and her power of the wind in order to be able to take down that fast keyword so this way the rangers will always have the first turn. Of course, it requires a little bit of energy. Within Chloe's deck, you'll find one X energy card, six zero energy, two one energy, and a three energy card. Her 10 card deck has eight attacks, two maneuvers, zero reactions, along with the standard type A shield breakdown, three one shield, four two shields, and three three shields. Speed is Chloe's game, so her first card, Accelerate, a zero cost maneuver card, a ranger of your choice may immediately play one card. If it is an attack, add one die to that attack. A lot of these earlier cards that you would see here because the game was very new at the time have very easy to understand and follow directions. This is just one of those cards. You play it in order to really boost the next attack card that can immediately be played. You don't have to lose a ranger's turn. In addition to that, it's your choice made that immediately play, thus speeding her up even more, doing more damage because she has a lot of attack cards in her deck and of course any extra dice could mean the difference between winning and utter defeat. Continuing to use her speed and taking advantage of the fast keyword, Swift Strike, a zero cost attack card, roll one dice and deal one guaranteed damage. After you resolve this attack, if the target had the fast keyword, gain one energy. A great 
a card in order to play in conjunction with her impulsive ability because you would have to spend the energy and this would gain it back. So you would still have your two energy in the pool right at the beginning of the game. Then you could play Accelerate as your first turn actually to make this a two dice, one guaranteed damage attack. Maximum that's still five damage, but if you happen to get a lucky roll, that's still something that can knock out a boss card or at least a foot soldier card uh, before anything happens and any real damage comes at the Rangers. Using the power of the wind, Hurricane Kick, a zero cost, one dice attack. Deal the damage from this attack to the target and to another enemy card adjacent to the target. Hitting the adjacent card will bypass guard because there's an effect that came off of the attack. So it's like one of those weird loopholes out there where you're able to get around a guard card and try to do a little bit of damage to something that it's, you know, protecting. And even though this is a one dice attack, as you saw with Accelerate, you can boost that up with an additional dice should you play that and then Hurricane Kick on top of it. Or you could just have something that's really close to being defeated and maybe one, two if you're having to get a lucky roll, uh, damage in order to be able to take it out. So she has a great way in order to be able to spread her damage around other cards and of course avoid not only the fast keyword, but also guard. The Hyperforce power weapons actually have two modes to them. For Chloe, Hyperion Bow, one energy, three dice attack, ignore the guard keyword when choosing a target for this attack. Simple. Easy, straightforward, only one energy for three dice, which is amazing. And like most bow users within Heroes of the Grid, she's able to target whatever she wants, getting around guard. Very amazing ability. Something that was awesome to have early days of uh, Heroes of the Grid because there wasn't much out there in order to be able to take down a lot of those keywords. And of course, as a bow user, you always gotta enjoy the, uh, the accuracy that she has when shooting her energy arrows. Transforming her bow into her ultimate power weapon and what she is holding right here, the Hyperion Scythe, a three energy, two dice attack, double the damage dealt by this attack. Again, straightforward, very easy to use. It's only two dice, but again, you can boost that up with Accelerate or any other forms of Zords or whatever to give you more dice. And whatever you roll, you simply double it. Whatever you're attacking takes all that damage. You do have to adhere to the guard rules because there's nothing on here that says you can avoid it and things along that ways. But it is a massive attack that could be even stronger depending on how much you pump into it. And lastly, the standard issue sidearm, an X energy blade blaster. Attack, special. This attack deals an amount of damage equal to the amount of energy spent to play this card. You may divide this damage among any number of targets. So this is exactly like the blade blasters from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The exact same effect, not the same image because obviously it's from uh, the Hyperforce uh, Boom comic, but it's the exact same thing where you need to adhere to the guard rule. The more energy you pump into it, the more damage it does, stuff along that way. I kind of wish that they did something different. Now I know that this was the first big box expansion to come out after it, and I mentioned that before. I wish they had maybe like uh, something else like a chrono well chrono blasters would technically time force but these guys are basically the sequel to time force so i wish it was something a little bit more i don't know original or to their characters but i'll talk about this more because this is something that every hyperforce ranger has or at least the core five so we're going to be seeing this again so all the zords and power weapons are actually greek inspired which is the first four power rangers so we have chloe zord the phoenix hyper zord exhaust this card to allow the ranger of your choice to choose a card from the discard pile and return it to their hand absolutely amazing especially if you played something that really helped you turn the tide in battle in order to knock out a bunch of guys you activate the phoenix or and rise that card back from the grave into your hand in order to be able to do it again i love it it's thematic it's awesome the phoenix zord looks really cool here and actually all the hyper zords are amazing amazing zords that you'll see as we continue on through the team vesper vasquez hyper force black Vesper is a mysterious, aggressive, and brilliant tactician for the team. She's also an android that was created to act and feel like a human, which gives her a few quirks such as lack of discretion. Despite her flaws, she's a very loyal team member and won't hesitate to use her super strength to fight when needed. Her special ability, Cry Havoc. If there are three or more enemy figures in your location, reduce the energy cost of all of your cards by one. Keywords are all of your cards, meaning this would only apply to Vesper if you're playing solo mode or multi-ranger mode, uh, if you have more in one hand or things along that way. This would only apply to Vesper's card. 
In the beginning of the game, most locations won't have their full panic in it, but later on, once you start getting more monsters and more foot soldiers on the field, you'll start getting those panic areas that have five or six characters on it. So this way, when you play Vesper in those, every single card she has reduces by one, making any one energy cards in her hand free, and of course, her powerful three energy card, a two. So it's probably best to have Vesper spread her attacks around in order to be able to take down as many guys as she can down to as low as she can and then use a blade blaster to finish them all off at once. Within her deck you'll find one X energy cost, four zero energy, four one energy, and one three energy cost card. She has six attacks, two maneuvers, and two reactions, as well as the standard A type shield ratio three four three, but two of those cards do have special star defense powers. Being an android, Vesper is strong, and she takes it out on all the enemies on the field, especially those that have already exhausted. Ground and pound, a zero cost, two dice attack. If the target of this attack was already resolved, add one dice to this attack. So that means if something has already hit your team, she's gonna jump in there in order to take revenge. Instead of having a two dice attack, it becomes a three dice attack. Now this is already a zero cost card. So even if there are more than three characters on the field or figures that you're fighting, then it doesn't matter. It's just still, still zero cost, but something good to hold on to for the end. Once you start reducing the amount of figures within the location, because regardless, this will gain that dice if a character has already resolved, if a foot soldier or a monster has already taken their turn, and then you can go at them with three dice, thus increasing your chances to take them out. Mentioning before using your Blade Blaster in order to take out multiple enemies at once, a good follow-up would be Hades Technique, a zero cost maneuver card. Gain one energy for each enemy card already defeated in battle. Every enemy that you've defeated, you'll be able to play this in order to gain the energy that you need in order to be able to do other things. Or what I like using this for is at the very end of the battle, when you have defeated all the foot soldiers and you've used a lot of energy, play this on the ranger's last turn. So that way you can generate a maximum of four energy into the uh, field. This will also include uh, monster cards. Each one of those cards does count as a separate thing. So you can get a lot of energy into the field because it's just an enemy card that has already been defeated. So if you defeated all those monster cards and defeated a lot of foot soldiers, you play it in order to draw in a lot of energy, which then you can distribute out to the rest of the team. Or if you have a few enemies left or maybe a really strong monster card, then you can just take all that energy, put it together into a powerful attack and take it down. Cerberus Fang, this is the one with the star defense power to it. A one energy, three dice attack, which is normally what it would be coming out of your hand. If there's three or more enemies on the field, this would be a zero energy cost. So that's an awesome thing to have, a zero cost, three dice attack that you could just like hit something with or whatever. However, if this card is revealed for defense, add it to your hand instead of discarding it or placing it on the bottom of your deck. That means you would still get the reduction of two shields because it is a two shields card, but instead of it going to the bottom of your deck, you can add it to your hand. You don't have to, you could place it on the bottom of your deck if you want, but having this in your hand is absolutely amazing. Again, if you have a lot more than three or more characters on the field, because this is a zero cost three dice attack, which is super powerful, especially for early Heroes of the Grid days. Her power weapon, Mode 1, the Koya Shield, a one-cost reaction card. Play this card when any ranger suffers damage to reduce that damage by two, then place this card on top of your deck instead of discarding it. That's actually what she's holding on her figure right now, the shield, and it, it, it does exactly what you would expect it to do, reducing all types of incoming damage. This card is amazing to use against monsters that have multiple spreading of damage, so like two here, three here, etc., etc., because you can reduce the initial intake from another ranger by two and actually it's any ranger so it even could come at her and then because this goes immediately to the top of her deck you're gonna have a five uh hit attack come at her and she would take absolutely zero damage if you had this card in your hand and if there's three or more figures on the field this is zero cost so it would be a completely negated attack uh with this particular card absolutely amazing vesper has some amazing offensive and defensive abilities to her Mode 2 to her power weapon in the powered up version is the Koyas Axe. And I like how like the pieces of the shield have broken off to three different points and everything. It's so awesome. Three energy, four dice attack. After you resolve this attack, deal one damage to each enemy card that has already resolved. So again, 
Based on the fact that everything has already attacked, Vesper really likes to wait until almost the end of the battle itself before she let loose with all of her powers and all of her abilities. The Koei Sax is amazing because anything that is already previously resolved, she's just dealing one damage across the board to all of it. This is another one of those things where you knock everyone down a little bit by a little bit until the very, very end where she takes out her shield and just wipes the field clean of every particular enemy that's there, taking advantage of the energy reduction, which is her special special ability, and then of course her multi-attacks on everything. And of course, this will bypass card because it's an effect. It's something that comes in addition to the attacks. You still have your attack and then the effect triggers, which will hit cards that are blocked or protected by guard cards. And if you don't have the axe in hand, you always have your blade blaster. Use your Hades technique in order to get a ton of energy based on what's already been defeated. And then of course, use the blade blaster in order to finish off the rest of the board. Let me tell you, Vesper can really wipe out entire groups of foot soldiers by herself. Her cards are made to almost be a perfect solo or single ranger attack force, but like all the other rangers and everything, never count that out. Always try to bring your rangers together because she will need help. She will need additional like energy and additional support in order to be able to boost her cards up. And then of course, she likes jumping in and helping out her rangers as well. So absolutely awesome to have her and all of her strengths and defenses for a fight. Finally, her Zord, one of my favorite Zords in the game, Cerberus Hyper Zord, exhausts this card to deal one damage each to up to three enemy cards. One, two, three, boom, 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 and again, they all go down. Spreading that damage around, having enemies just right there at the edge of being defeated, and then going in with massive attacks like the Blade Blaster or the Axe, or now the Cerberus, in order to keep doing that single ping damage, boom, 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 and then wiping the field clean, thus giving the Rangers a complete victory over the location that they're in, hopefully unpanicking it, and then, of course, working their way towards their next Zord, and ultimately, the Megazord. Eddie Banks, Hyperforce Blue. Eddie is a happy-go-lucky history nerd who is an enthusiastic cadet and idolizes the Power Rangers. He's very knowledgeable of history, especially events and movies from the 1990s. He's a reliable team member and always finds a way to bring a smile to the group. He also has a thing for Vesper. Eddie's special ability, Technician. Once per battle, a ranger of your choice may place up to three cards from their hand on the bottom of their deck and then draw an equal number of cards. Very cool way in order to cycle through your deck in the beginning of a game, especially if you're holding stuff that you don't think you're going to need for the upcoming battle. Best to put stuff like that on the bottom of your deck and then kind of redraw up to that many cards. Eddie has a bunch of cards that enable him to manipulate the deck in order to be able to foresee exactly what it is that he'll be drawing and how to plan accordingly for each encounter. Eddie's deck is made up of one X energy card, six zero energy, two one energy, and one three energy card. He has six attacks and four maneuvers and has the standard three four three shield breakdown. I love Eddie's constant snake and serpent theme throughout the course of his deck because his Zord is the Serpent Zord, so of course a lot of his cards are named accordingly. Coiling Viper, a zero cost, two dice attack. After you play this card, place it on top of your deck instead of discarding it. Again, that works well with the Technician because you could throw three cards on the bottom of your deck, draw these, and then once you're done playing it, it goes back on top. In a sense, Eddie is creating the deck exactly the way that he wants it, so this way he knows what the next card is in preparation for whatever attack is coming, and then if he has to draw a card, he knows what's theirs too, so he can draw it and play it to its full effect. Of course, that ability in the beginning could also work for other rangers, and Eddie, at least having this on top of his deck, gives him a two-shield card in order to be able to defend against something coming in. Two shields is pretty average, and there's the most of those in the deck. Serpent Strike, a zero-cost maneuver card, and this shows one of Eddie's most interesting mechanics, and one that I don't think we've seen again in Heroes of the Grid, at least as of now. Uh, gain one energy, attach this card to one enemy card, after that enemy resolves, deal two damage to that enemy. So basically, instead of this going into your discard pile, you are putting it on top of an enemy card that has not resolved yet. So the enemy card has not resolved, this would then like lay on top of it. Once the enemy has resolved, it is then dealt two damage. And if the enemy is defeated, then this card goes to your discard pile. 
and he has some very crazy cards in here that allow him to attach himself to other cards, either restricting them, hence the whole snake theme and everything, or causing more damage by constricting them. See, as that works as well. I love it, it's awesome. I wish there was more way to incorporate stuff like this into other rangers in the series. Uh, I'm sure they'll be able to find something down the line, but you don't see the attach mechanic come up very often. Continuing with that, Python Grab, a one energy maneuver card. Attach this card to one enemy card, reduce all damage dealt by that card by two. That enemy card loses the guard keyword for the rest of this battle. That right there, that last part, losing the guard keyword, even if the card that you're attaching this to does no to minimum damage, just losing the guard keyword for the rest of the battle is huge because that enables you to get to the other cards next to it with other abilities and things along that ways. And then of course, you know, and again, damage coming in is reduced, which is great and all, but it just gives you more options because it opens up the field more. Again, you don't see much stuff like that in Heroes of the Grid where a card played on top of an enemy card completely changes the wording on it or gets rid of it or negates wording like that. Awesome ability. I wish I could see more stuff like that and it actually fits the entire snake theme for Eddie. Power Weapon Mode 1, and this is actually a zero energy cost card. The others from Chloe and Vesper were one. Oceanus Blade, zero cost, two dice attack card. After you resolve this attack, you and another ranger of your choice may each draw one card. So it's always gonna be Eddie. Eddie will always have that choice and then he can choose another ranger in order to draw a card as well. They don't have to, but at the same time, they may need to. They may know what's on top of their deck. Eddie, of course, as I mentioned, stacks his deck. So he'll always know what the next card is. Maybe he'll wanna draw that in order to be able to have a good attack card or something in order to be able to play for the next turn that the Rangers have. It's also a zero cost two dice attack. Really not so, so bad, but not a bad, like decent enough. Zero cost for two dice, you can get some decent damage out of that. It's really a matter of gaining another card into your hand to have the options for later that this card brings to the table. Power Weapon Mode 2, and it's the one that Eddie is holding in his hand, the Oceanus Trident. Three energy, three dice attack. Not bad, okay, you know, one energy per dice, you know, we can do better than that, but this effect. After you resolve this attack, choose up the three cards from Ranger discard piles and shuffle them back into their respective decks. This can go to anybody. You can choose any three cards in any discard pile and shuffle them back into a Ranger deck. So if you have a particular Ranger who's more of the tank, the defensive one, just take all three cards and throw them back into there. Or maybe you're looking to set up a particular combo in the future. So you take certain cards from certain rangers shuffle them back into their deck and then hopefully be able to use maybe eddie's ability to cycle them out if they can't get them or something along that way so this way you have something strong and set up for a future attack awesome ability in this he is a brilliant tactician uh, tactician in order to be able to figure out different ways to manipulate the decks and everything early heroes of the grid had all the blue rangers like this billy was almost exactly like this in the original game and I love that a lot of this comes to Eddie as well, using his intelligence, using his smarts in order to be able to know exactly what you have coming. Eddie's Blade Blaster, standard issue sidearm, nothing really too crazy with this, same exact stuff. Uh, maybe not taking advantage of it as much as like Vesper would or one of the other Rangers, but even still, if he's coiling around somebody and he does that two damage and they're not quite defeated, then the Blade Blaster is great to use there. And then of course the one where it knocks out a guard ability for a particular card, use your Blade Blaster immediately because then you're able to spread your damage around all of those cards that were originally guarded by that particular one. So maybe not as many uses, but still enough uses in itself in order to be able to use that power to its fullest. You just gotta have the energy, because Eddie doesn't really gain too much energy from his cards. I think there may be like one or two in there that do that. So spend wisely, use wisely, and Eddie will lead you to victory. And of course, Eddie's Zord, the Serpent Hyper Zord. Exhaust this card during a battle to flip up the two foot soldier cards face down as though they were defeated. Do not remove any foot soldier figures from that location. This is great because not only does it remove enemies from your battle, making certain battles easier, especially if you're going up against monster or bosses, the figures don't actually get removed from the location, which is a good and bad thing in its own right. But if Vesper is in your location with this, 
you'll be able to continue to use her special ability because those figures are not removed, but they are flipped over and are considered defeated. So not only does her special ability continue to kick in, but she has her card, the Hades technique, I believe it was, that enables her to gain energy for cards that have been defeated. And according to the Hyper uh, Serpent Sword here, they are considered defeated when they are flipped down. So you're able to then just build off of that. Amazing, amazing card. Really cool that it's able to take the foot soldiers out of the fight even though they technically are still there, but that means that your next battle, even though they may be there, you've been able to thin the herd a little bit within the location and take them out that way. Awesome Zord, really cool. Eddie, Eddie is one of my favorite characters in Hyperforce, hands down. Jack Thomas, Hyperforce Yellow. Originally a beat cop, Jack was assigned to give a lecture at Time Force Academy and got distracted when he witnessed a suspicious woman leave an evidence room. While tailing her, he ran into what would become the rest of the Hyperforce team, and that's where his adventure began. Jack is the oldest in the group, very wise and level-headed. He doesn't take any nonsense and will never back down when defending innocent lives. Jack's special ability, Steadfast. Each time you suffer damage, before revealing any cards for defense, you may choose one card from your hand and place it on top of your deck. Jack is very, very defensive. He is the biggest character in the team, and of course, he is going to be able to take the most hits. Anything in his hand that he has that is either maybe three stars, two stars, or special star defense, which he does have a few of those in his deck as well, you're able then to place right on top and absorb whatever damage is coming in, reducing it to nothing or activating whatever star defense he has. Within his deck, you'll find 1x energy, 40 energy, 41 energy, and 13 energy cost cards. He has 8 attacks and 2 reactions. The standard 343 shield breakdown, which is type A. And like I said, he has 2 cards within his deck that grant star defense powers. Straight out of his police training, protect and serve a zero cost reaction card when any ranger would discard a card for defense. Play this card to gain one energy and allow that ranger to place that card on the bottom of their deck instead of discarding it, thus keeping the ranger in the battle longer. Because remember, your deck is your life. As you flip through your cards and they go into your discard pile, your ranger is losing more and more energy, more and more power and abilities. The way that Jack works is that you'll be able to play that gain an energy, which is great because you could always use more energy to do more powerful and abilities and things along that ways. But then it goes to the bottom of the ranger deck in order to be able to keep them in the fight. And with Jack pretty much being uh, the defense, you're going to want to be able to keep other rangers while he's doing it because his card does say when another ranger. So he would not be able to use this for himself. Next, really leaning into the whole Ram motif that he has, which is a first for Power Rangers, by the way. We have Headbutt, a zero cost, two dice attack. After you resolve this attack, if the target had the guard keyword, return this card to your hand instead of discarding it. So now you want to have cards that actually have the guard keyword in it in order to be able to take advantage of these things. Zero cost, two dice attack, awesome to be able to do it, come back to your hand, and then on the next turn, do it again, come back to your hand. And that's what you do, you're just constantly ramming into them. Boom, 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 boom. It's also a three shield card, so at any point when that enemy attacks and they happen to do a lot of uh, like damage or whatever, he can use his steadfast ability in order to be able to put this on top of his deck in order to absorb that you know strength or whatever or that attack that's coming at him. Defensive, offensive, and of course the ability to just constantly bounce a card back to your hand. I love cards like this. Ram Rush, one energy, three dice attack, which is pretty much all it does standard or whatever, but this is your star defense power. Now it is only one shield, so it's not going to block a lot of damage, but if this card is discarded for defense, the next time you perform an attack during this battle, add one die to that attack. Very particular keywording here. This card is discarded for defense, which means it cannot go on the bottom of your deck. It cannot go to your hand. It has to go to your discard pile. The moment that goes to your discard pile, the next attack you, meaning Jack, performs, they will be able to add one dice to his attack. You gotta watch these wordings on these because you just can't throw them around there and gain this, that, and the other thing. If Jack is definitely getting hit by something and maybe, you know, you put, you flip it over, oh, I only have maybe one defense left or something like that, take the random rush from his hand, put it on it, and then flip it over so this way whatever he does next, he may have another uh, head button in his hand to do a three dice attack for that one. At least it adds another dice to the attack and thus increasing his power and ability to take down an enemy. 
Power weapon time, the Creus Cannon. One energy, three dice attack. If this attack defeats the target, deal one damage to an enemy card adjacent to the target. Again, that is definitely going to bypass guard because it is an additional effect to the card. Uh, it's going to happen regardless of anything because it's to an adjacent card, up, down, or left or right, depending on where you are. But, of course, a one energy, uh, three dice attack is never a bad thing either. It's a pretty strong attack. Hopefully, we'll be able to defeat it. And then, of course, doing that one additional damage to something left or right will be able to knock something else out as well. The cannon is very weird the way it is, uh, especially when you see what the original weapon is. And that's actually what he's holding here, the hammer. Uh, very odd design. I'm not exactly sure how that transforms into the cannon. Uh, I wish it was a little bit bigger of a spread. It should have been to each enemy adjacent. But, hey, you know what? Do what you got to do. It's still a decent card to have. Power Weapon Mode 2, the actual physical version of this, and the one that he uses a lot, if I can remember from the uh, the show. The Creus Hammer, a 3 energy, 5 dice attack. Probably the highest we've seen so far in all of Hyperforce. The next time any Ranger suffers damage this battle, reduce that damage by 2. So really what you're paying for is not only a massive hit with the hammer, but the next time an enemy goes and deals damage to anybody, it's immediately reduced by 2, which could mean an enemy does absolutely nothing to a ranger, and you can have them just kind of go off into nothing, and a ranger could survive the battle along that ways, or just any reduction is always great to have if it comes at Jack, if it goes on any one of the other ones. So, not bad, pretty cool uh, power weapon. It should have actually been reduced that damage by 3, I think, but you know what? It is what it is. Uh, 5 dice attack is still nothing, <laughs> still nothing to disregard, because that in its own right is a monster killer right there. One hard hit from this massive hammer, and down they go. Standard issue sidearm, the Blade Blaster, what everybody else in Hyperforce has. This is something that I wish that maybe they gave Jack a different weapon, because as a beat cop, he probably wouldn't have had this on his like person normally. I feel like that if they gave him the Blade Blaster, he would have a different blaster, maybe a Chrono Blaster already, because he was part of Time Force, I believe. And then it's like maybe its own crazy fusion of blade, chrono, blaster morph together or something along that way. I don't know. I just feel like Jack's um, background as a police officer would have been better if it was something different rather than the standard blade blaster that everyone else has. But again, as I mentioned before, and it kind of holds true right now, uh, this was again a very early uh, expansion to Heroes of the Grid. We've come a long way since then with so many different powers, so many different abilities, so many different mechanics and ways that characters work within each other and everything. I can see why they did this here, just to make it simple and easy and for the fact that every character would have at least one card the same, so you know that if one person got rid of it, it would show up again somewhere later. Jack Zord the Ram Hyper Zord. Exhaust this card when any ranger suffers damage to reduce that damage by three. Simple, easy, straightforward. Again, Jack is a tank. He, of course, is driving around a tank. I wish that also it maybe did a little bit of damage, just like retaliation damage, but you know what? Reducing an attack by three is also really good in its own right. That's almost every foot soldier out there. You'll be able to just reduce their attack to absolutely nothing by that. And then most monsters as well, especially if they have one of those like deal two damage, deal two damage, deal two damage. At the very least, you'll be able to negate one of those and keep the rangers in the fight moving on to their next ability. This is definitely something that as you fight bosses and whatnot, if you have the ability to unexhaust or, uh, Zord cards, might be one that you want to consider because those bosses can really dish out the hurt and reduce it by three could mean the difference between winning and losing a ranger in battle. Marvin Shi, Hyperforce Red, an extraterrestrial human from the planet Kayan. Marv infiltrated Time Force Academy searching for his brother Joe. Through fate, he found himself as part of the Hyperforce team and was made the unofficial leader of the group. In battle, he has an uncanny ability to make split decisions that help the team avoid major attacks. Like most of the other Rangers, he was very guarded about his past at first, but opened up to them as they became a strong united Power Rangers team. Marv's special ability, Determination, once per battle, you may either discard one card to gain one energy or spend one energy to draw one card. Marv is a lot about versatility here, always able to, again, as I said, make those split decisions in the middle of battle. Sometimes he may need an extra card in order to gain advantage of being able to attack something. Sometimes he may need that extra energy in order to pull off a strong attack. Either way, both of those are very good options to have, regardless if you're fighting a group of foot soldiers, a monster, or the boss. Marv's deck breaks down to 1x energy, 6-0 energy, 2-1 energy, and a 3 energy cost card. 
He has six attacks, four maneuvers, and no reactions in his deck, and has the standard 343 shield breakdown. Able to know instinctively how to take down monsters, Find Weakness, a zero cost maneuver card. Gain one energy. The next time any ranger performs an attack during this battle, add two guaranteed damage to that attack. Does not require a roll, does not require any type of luck or chance or whatever. It's just boom, it happens. Now, this is also the next time a ranger performs an attack. So this is taking up an entire ranger's turn. This is a setup for the next turn. So whatever is coming in between, you got to be able to take down. You also can gain an energy from it, which is amazing. You always got to be able to gain energy because you never know when you're going to need it. Next, we have Defensive Stance, a zero cost maneuver card. Marv does a lot with this card. So gain one energy, draw one card, then place this card on top of your deck instead of discarding it. Again, this card, like the last maneuver, will take up the Ranger's entire turn. You're not going to be able to play another card or do anything else in addition to that, whatever. Marv is all about the setup for later in the battle, getting your characters ready, getting your Rangers all prepped and set in order to be able to find the points that he needs to find in order to defeat the enemy. And this is also great because you gain an energy, can never go wrong with that, gains another card into his hand, so only Marv is drawing a card here, but that's fine because he has a lot of cards in here that he can hold on to in order to say, all right, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's go at it. And then of course, this goes on top of his decks. So you're drawing first, and then you're placing this on top of your deck, meaning that any attack that comes at Marv will be able to reduce it by three. And if you have Jack in there, he could reduce it further. So Marv will be able to sit there, take the hits, hold his hands up, defend whatever's coming at him and his team, and then in the next Ranger turn, deliver a powerful counterattack. Speaking of which, going into his attack mode, Double Slash. This is not mode one of his uh, weapon, even though you see it in his hand. A one energy, two dice attack. After you resolve this attack, you may discard one card from your hand to perform a second attack with two dice, targeting a different enemy. So basically he's taking his claws, slashing at one, and then slashing at another target. You do have to adhere to the guard rule when choosing these attacks because they are labeled as attacks. They are both two dice attacks. You would be able to enhance one at a time. You wouldn't be able to enhance both of them because the second attack is considered a completely different like uh, like action, if you want to say, for the round. So his first attack would get two dice, his second attack would get two dice. Any type of manipulation of the dice would have to happen to each one individually. But even still, you're spending an energy and a card to get a two dice attack and then a two dice attack. Even though they're at different enemies, that's still something that you're gonna be able to use pretty well to your advantage to knock down like power and health for various other uh, enemies. And then using maybe like Vesper to go in and like mop them up or using the hurricane kick from Chloe in order to be able to deal them like that. So awesome ability, the double slash. Now we're in mode one of his power weapon, the Ipidus Blaster. I hope that's how you pronounce that. This is also really weird because it's his two claws put together and it's kind of, think of it like a Hadouken of sorts where the claws are up here and then the center point is where like this energy blast is coming out of. Uh, zero cost, two dice attack. Before rolling, you may spend one energy to add one die to this attack. So you may have a lot of cards in your hand or like three or four or whatever. And you think, you know what? I would I'd rather have a zero cost three dice attack. So I'm going to use Marv's ability to discard the card to gain an energy. Then I'm going to play the blaster and spend that energy to make it a three dice attack. Absolutely amazing. So then it becomes a one cost three dice attack. Still absolutely fine. We see that plenty of times in it. But if you don't want to spend the energy, it's still a two dice attack at minimum at zero cost. Blasting away the enemies to one, one die at a time. Mode two of his power weapons, the Ipidus Claws. I hope that's how you pronounce that. Uh, three energy, three dice attack. After you resolve this attack, you may perform a second attack with two dice. Then you may perform a third attack with one die. Basically, this is like a flurry of attacks, flurry of strikes and claw swipes and things along that ways. Uh, just like with the last one that did multiple attacks, each one of these is its own individual attack. So if there's any type of uh, like additional dice that you want to add to it or whatever, you have to do that per attack if you have the ability to do it in between like a reaction of some sorts. So the first attack is going to be three dice, second attack is two, third attack is one. You can choose different targets, you can choose the same target, which is pretty good because if you have a very strong monster there, you can roll three dice. Oh, it's almost close to being dead, so I'm going to roll two dice to kill it, and then your last one dice can go against a foot soldier or something along that ways. Very nicely well made uh, power weapon for him, and again, he has a lot of setup, a lot of cards that build and build and build for him to be able to just go in and multi-swipe cards and multi-attack uh, enemies that way. 
using the claws to their full advantage. But again, remember, if something adds a dice to the next attack, it's always going to be the first attack. After that, just a little bit weaker and a little bit weaker. Using all the energy that Marv has built up, to go ahead and use the Blade Blaster, as we all know what this does and everything. But this actually has his pitcher on it. Like all the other Rangers in Hyperforce, this card will have Marv's pitcher uh, firing off the Blade Blaster. I like it in later ones where they kind of change it around a little bit to represent whatever the sidearm is for that particular Ranger. Uh, especially if it only shows one ranger on it. Time Force particularly, I like the way they did that. But that's all right, it's all good. Marv is uh, <laughs> pretty good at generating energy throughout the course of the battle. So all that leftover energy at the end of it, pump into the Blade Blaster, fire away, take them down, boom, 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 one at a time. Or just hang on to it and discard it in order to gain an energy to use uh, for a more powerful weapon or for one of the other rangers in battle. And finally, Marv Zord, the Lion Hyper Zord. Of course, lion theme claws, can't go wrong there. Exhaust this card when any ranger performs an attack to convert all misses to single hit results. How many times out there have you rolled six, seven, eight dice, and out of all those dice, all except maybe one were misses? I've seen it happen quite a few times. It's happened to me a few times. The Lion Zord here is the ultimate response to that. So this way, if you have something like the Blade Blaster from all of like all the Hyperforce here, their standard issue si sidearms or whatever, you happen to have eight energy at the end of battle. You want to take out a bunch of guys, you roll all eight dice and six or seven of them are misses. Use the Lion Sword, convert them into hits, and now you have a lot more power in order to be able to spread out amongst all of the enemies. Awesome ability, one that I would love to have in most of my games whenever I play Heroes of the Grid, because the ability to convert misses to hits is just absolutely fantastic. Then you don't have to worry about rolling like crud, because if you do, you can always use the Lion Zord, and boom, there are your hits anyway. Of course, it only happens one per round unless you're able to unexhaust it, but hey, you know what? Absolutely fantastic Zord. Great for Marv, and of course, his ability to just build everyone up and then deal massive damage all at once. <laughs> I'm assuming that's how it goes. What? You're green? You're Wait, what? What? Uh, yeah. oh, oh. Oh. Welcome to the team. Hey, that's cool. Yay. Joshi. Hyperforce Green. Time Force originally sent Joe on a covert mission and also gave him the powers of the Silver Time Force Ranger. He did catch up with Marv during the Hyperforce adventures, letting him know that he was okay and that he needed to continue the mission. After losing his Silver Ranger powers, Joe managed to make his way across time and meet up with his brother while also obtaining the powers of the Green Hyperforce Ranger, helping the team and defeating the forces of evil. Don't worry, there's a perfectly good explanation to why he went from Silver to Green. His special ability, Enduring Strength, once per battle, you may spend one energy to choose one card from any Ranger's discard pile and place it on the bottom of their deck. Again, that's exactly what that is. Your health is your deck. The stronger your deck is, the more cards within your deck, the stronger your ranger is. And I like it how once per battle he's able to do that. So if you have any ranger that's on the verge of going down or seems to be losing uh, the battle or may get knocked out, you can spend that energy in order to bring them back in and keep them in the fight for a little bit longer. Joe's deck is very different from the other Hyperforce Rangers. He has one X energy cost, four zero, two one, two two, and a three energy. He has six attacks, two maneuvers, and two reactions, but his shield breakdown is the same as all the other ones, a type A, three, four, three. There's a lot in Hyperforce that pays homage to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I mean, obviously the colors of all the Rangers are the original MMPR, the sixth Ranger being green, and then of course the green Ranger having a shield, the Hydra Shield, a zero cost reaction card. Play this card after any Ranger performs a maneuver, gain one energy and place this card on top of your deck instead of discarding it. It's not a super strong shield. It is only a two shield work thing here. But it'd been better if this was a three shield card, but that's okay. It's still something that he can use for later in order to defend some incoming damage. It does gain an energy, can't go wrong with that. And it is a zero cost card. Inside of Joe's deck, I've noticed whenever I've gone through it, there's a lot of like, other abilities that you've seen throughout the course of the Hyperforce Rangers. So the Hydra Shield is very much like taking after Jack being a very defensive card. And then of course, Green Rangers having the Golden Shield as we've all kind of gotten used to by now. Joe's power weapon is an interesting one and I'll go over that a little bit later when we talk about it. But he has this card, the Hydra Coil. Zero cost, two guaranteed damage, so you don't have to do any rolling. After you resolve this card, attach this card to the target, deal one damage to the attached 
uh, enemy card after it resolves. So it works very similar to the way that Eddie has his cards, where you're doing some damage or something beforehand, and then this is laying on top of an enemy card, and once the enemy card activates or does something, it then triggers its secondary effect. So this will ultimately do three damage to whatever it is that you're targeting, uh, but it will have to resolve in order to be able to do that extra damage. Best part about this though, zero cost, two guaranteed damage. I love cards where you don't have to roll, just because it's a little bit more of a guarantee in order to be able to know that you're gonna beat something. Next is Enduring Strike, a one energy, two dice attack card. After you resolve this card, choose one card from your discard pile and place it on the bottom of your deck. Resolving a card actually puts it in your discard pile. After you're done with it, it goes there. So that means that after this card is resolved, you could take this card and put it on the bottom of your deck. There are two of these within uh, Joe's deck. So you could have a pretty good rotation of enduring strikes of just going in, hitting quickly, and then giving him more defense and more longevity in the fight. Joe seems to have that ability to him. He could probably take on hordes of like foot soldiers by himself because he's always taking cards and putting them under his deck, putting them under his deck, play something, put it under his deck. He'll be able to take the hits, but then also to be able to deliver hits back out at the enemies by using cards like this or the Hydra Coil or some of the other ones that I have. Next is his two energy cost card, the Venom Charge Maneuver. Attach this card to an enemy card. At the end of each enemy turn in battle, deal one damage to that enemy. Another ranger may immediately play one card. So it's another ranger, so he's not gonna be able to play another card right away. He's gonna have to rely on somebody else to go in. But it's a cool new way to like, Poison an enemy, Venom Charge. It makes sense, right? You're attacking it, and at the end of every, was that, enemy turn? Yeah, they would then be dealt one damage. I love that effect, and I'm surprised, again, that hasn't come up more. Now, there hasn't really been any venomous or poisonous style of uh, rangers that have come out, but I could definitely see that kind of working, you know, in future rangers and things along that ways. Uh, just another way to use the attach mechanic as well, the same thing that we saw in Eddie, a little bit different, which is awesome. But keep in mind, this will not go into his deck after he's done playing it until the enemy that it's attached to has either been defeated or the round has ended. So be very careful on who you attach this to and hope that maybe by the end of the round, that particular card is just poisoned itself to death rather than you having to actually face it. So his power weapon kind of has two modes, but kind of doesn't. You can see he actually has both modes on this right now, the single straight sword and then the snake sword, kind of like here, think Ivy from Soul Calibur. This is Raya Swords, three energy, one dice attack. Now hold on, after you resolve this attack, you may perform a second attack with two dice, then you may perform a third attack with three dice. It's the reverse of what Marv is. Marv and Joe are brothers. They are, they're not twins or whatever, but they are siblings. I think they're maybe only like a year or so apart, uh, both in real life and in lore, because the actors that play them are brothers as well. And it's, again, the reverse. You're doing a one dice attack, a two dice attack, and then a three dice attack. And again, as you go down the list, you're able then to change around and add dice or whatever to each one of those attacks individually. I like the Raya Sword better because it's one dice, and then you could add two or three dice to it, so now it's a four dice attack, and then a two dice attack, and then a three dice attack. So you have the most amount of dice possible spread out amongst all your different attacks. Really cool sword, amazing ability. I love how it plays off of Marv's just because it's, you know, the reverse of it. Very, very, very cool, very well done. And I think this may be one of the first I've ever seen a six ranger have the standard issue sidearm that all of the other rangers within their team has. He has a blade blaster, isn't that fantastic? I don't know if he really should have some type of other sidearm or something along that ways, or if the Raya sword should have been like a second, like another type of like Raya whip or something like that. But, you know, he has a Blade Blaster, uh, same thing as all the other ones, pump energy into it, deal damage, yada, 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 or just kind of use it as, you know, something to throw out if you need to discard a card, or it's only one shield, so it's not really that good either in order to defend with. But it just, it just fascinates me to see it because I'm not used to seeing a standard issue sidearm in a sixth Ranger. They usually have, like, their own unique weapons that kind of fit their own shtick. Eddie may have the Serpent, but Joe has the Hydra Hyperzord. Exhaust this card when any Ranger discards a card for defense. Place that card on the bottom of their deck. Deal one damage to an enemy card of your choice. <laughs> for something like a Hydra, you know, you're always thinking about, so the way the Hydra's work, you, you cut off one head and another one comes off and blah, 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 blah. I don't know, I just, I feel like something more should have been with this. And I know the Zords are very much a balance. You gotta be able to make them powerful and, you know, well, uh, well balanced within the game itself. 
but I think this one is just a little bit too like under underdeveloped. Maybe it should have been deal two, uh, deal one damage to up to two enemy cards of your choice or something along that ways, along with placing the card that was used for defense on the bottom of your card. Just a little bit something extra for like head does this, head does this, head does this, boom, 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 boom. I don't know. That's just my opinion of it or whatever. Um, it's it's a cool looking Zord. I love the art on it and everything. I just think that the ability is a little underwhelming for not only the card itself in terms of like the feeling I get when looking at it, but also the six a uh, six ranger. I feel like six ranger Zord should be a little bit more than this. And finally, that brings us to the Chrono Hyperforce Megazord. The card itself is a little hard to see how this thing works out. But again, as I mentioned before, Hyperforce is kind of a big homage to MMPR, where you have uh, both legs are yellow and blue. So Triceratops and Saber Tutaka for MMPR. The Serpent and the Ramzords are on the legs for the Chrono Hyperzord here. The body piece, and I believe the head, is the lion. The arms are the Cerberus. And then actually the back of the Chrono is the... Uh, what is it? The, the the phoenix. And I think maybe that also forms the head. I don't know. I, I don't quite remember how this wing snapped together. Because other than the comic book, you really just had the theater of the mind that you saw whenever you had Hyperforce. And then like any images they had. In any event, at the start of each battle, each participating ranger may search their deck or discard pile for a card and add it to their hand. If they do, they must shuffle their deck. This is just... Everybody, everybody, pick a card. What do you what do you want? You see what we have in front of you? You see what we have to deal with and things along that ways? Go ahead. Search through your deck. Search through your discard pile. Doesn't matter what it is. Take that card back to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Let's go at it. Awesome way in order to um, use the Megazord that way. Actually, a really good ability in itself. And I know Megazords have some crazy abilities out there. But this particular one, to make your hand whatever it is you want to be, at least with one card at the beginning of your battle, is ideal. If you're going up against something fast, bring Chloe in in order to like avoid the fast or get rid of it. If you see a lot of guards in there, use one of the other characters. Like, you know, if you have Eddie, use something that gets rid of guard or goes around it or <laughs> use the ram head or whatever it is from Jack in order to take advantage of it. A lot of different possibilities and options that you have with the Chrono Hyperforce Megazord to determine what you have in order your hand in order to fight the villains, monsters, and bosses that you're going up against. And there you have it, everybody. Power Rangers Hyperforce, one of the earliest expansions to come out for Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid, and of course a team of solely American-made Rangers. So none of these appear in Japan in the Super Sentai series at all. All their backstories, all of their powers, all their abilities, their Zords combination, things along that ways, completely American-made and used to entertain you through the tabletop RPG from Hyper RPG inside of the comics. I really, really, really hope to see these guys in the show one day, they wouldn't be live action, but if an animated uh, Power Rangers was ever made, I can 100% see Hyperforce going in, and every one of these guys here, every one of the actors that play them, you know, that played the game with them, should go and voice them. That would be awesome. In any event, let me know what you think of Hyperforce down in the comment section below. How long have you had this set? I assume if you're playing Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid, this is something that you probably bought right away because it wasn't much out and you just kind of wanted to get as much as you could. Or is that just me? I'm not sure. Uh, have you been curious about them? Have you seen about them? Did you avoid them because you didn't know anything about them, being that they were American-made and they didn't appear in any other of the show media or things along like that? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And of course, let me know your combos. What other Rangers have you paired with various Hyperforce Rangers to give you great advantages in battle, the most dice that you can roll, the most power, the most defense? All those things are great to know, not only for me in my future plays, but everybody else who watches this because they can go down to the comments and get inspiration for their games. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Home Gamer Dad so you don't miss any future Power Ranger action. I will be having a full playthrough of the Hyperforce Rangers coming up very soon. As per normal, that will be a three-part episode so you guys can digest it a little bit easier. I think I'm going to be using one of the scenarios from the scenario book in order to incorporate this, going up against Dracon and the Mastodon Troopers and uh, probably Black Dragon and, uh, what is it, Ranger Slayer? Because that was all part of the Hyperforce story. That entire Shattered Grid line happened because of Hyperforce. So it just feels right in order to be able to play a session using all those if I'm going to be playing as the Hyperforce Rangers. Which one of these guys will I be playing as? I actually know already, so I'm not going to be putting a vote out for anything along that ways. Uh, but you will be able to find out when I play that session. So again, subscribe, 
ring that notification so that's way you know when those go live. And of course, let me know all your thoughts and comments down in the comment section below. You guys are amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. As always, take care of yourselves and each other. We are family forever, gaming together. Stand up for the fight, defend with your might, and do what you know is right. Until next time, you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one.